Hello, it's me talking to me. Doing my best to talk to me anyway. That's my goal today. <clears throat> Take it slow, Joe. Stream of consciousness. Why am I whispering? Well, one, one reason is because it is, it's not late. It's 9.32 p.m., but I am recording this um, by a wall that I know is adjacent to a neighbor. And while um, part of me thinks I don't really owe this particular neighbor any kind of courtesy, because this particular neighbor has been polluting the air outside of our apartments, our adjacent apartments for ever since they've lived here with their smoke. Um, the other part of me thinks I don't want to stoop. I don't want my behavior, the way that I treat people to be based on how they treat me. As I say that, though, I realize that that's not, it's not a hundred percent foolproof plan. I mean, if somebody punches me in the face, I don't want to thank them for it. And, you know, conversely, if somebody's really nice to me, I don't want to punch them in the face. <laughs> so... There's a lesson in there somewhere. I guess the, the thing is about this is, uh, here's my goal right now. I'm talking at a low enough volume where, you know, I'm not bothersome to anybody. Or I shouldn't be anyway. It's just my own self-consciousness that's leading me to um, think about them. One of my goals uh, at this moment is to stop being self-conscious. It's an overall goal for my life as well. It's, it's um, a goal. Is it a goal? Here's one of the paradoxes. I've been listening a lot to Alan Watts lately. And one of the things that he's conveyed that's really been rattling around in my head is the, the paradox of trying versus not trying. That one of one of the one of the goals, one possible goal for a human being on this planet. Let's go to uh, like the self consciousness thing, or getting rid of ego. Do you try to get rid of your ego, or not? Because even just the, uh, the act of trying is an act of the ego. So there's the dilemma. If I am trying to get rid of my ego, who is it that's trying? It would be me and my big old ego trying to get rid of itself. Yeah, it's a dog chasing its tail. That's the thing about philosophy, and I've, I've been uh, in and out of the philosophical game over the years in my life, although I guess I'm in it more than not. Because even when I don't admit it, or when I don't do something as explicit as 
talking right now, like I'm doing right now. <clears throat> I'm I'm constantly introspective. I'm thinking about things. I mean, don't we all? But I just venture to guess that some people think more deeply than others. And I'm not going to say I'm thinking more deeply than others. I'm just going to say that I, I tend to dive into myself and into things outside of myself rather than, uh, you know, thinking a lot about the Kardashians. Although I guess, you know, the Kardashians are something I could delve into if I wanted to. Part of what I could delve into about the Kardashians or other people outside of me, people that I, I don't uh, know personally, is that they can have an effect on me if I let them. And the same thing is true whether those external people are celebrities or neighbors or somebody at the grocery store or somebody I'm just driving nearby in my car, there in their car. Am I thinking about them? Am I concerned about what they're thinking about me? Less and less, I think. It's hard to measure these things, but I feel like I've gotten better. Better. That's my judgment. Better. What is better or worse, I feel and here's, here's the thing, when I make these qualifying statements, it should go without saying that when I say something is better, that that's just my opinion. But rather than having it go without saying, I choose right now to say something about it. When I say that I've gotten better over the years, about thinking less about what other people are thinking about me, I believe it's better to think less about what people are thinking about me. Because for the most part, I'm not a mind reader. Well, not for the most part, I'm not a mind reader. That's one of the four agreements. Don't make assumptions. Don't make assumptions, and a lot of times we just assume that we know what other people are thinking. That is a losing battle. Because whether we are assuming that other people are thinking good stuff about us or bad stuff about us, it's just, a, it's just our opinion. And it's just a coin flip. Although it's not binary. I mean, they can be thinking all kinds of shades of things about us in between good and bad. The main point is though, thinking a lot about what other people are thinking about us is just a lot of mental masturbation. It's a waste of brain power. Does that mean I don't care about people? No doesn't mean that we're all connected I like to think that uh, the majority of what I say and do these days anyway is uh, a positive influence on the world not that I uh, think that what I'm doing and saying is spreading out to the world, but in the sense that every one of us is sending messages out to the world. I think I'm more of a positive influence than a negative one. I don't complain as much as I used to. I catch myself complaining and, uh, 
do my best to turn it to a positive thing. Does that mean I ignore everything bad in my life and in the world? No. I'll think about it. Think about the bad stuff, whether in my life or in the world. But here's the thing about bad stuff in the world. And in fact, probably um, the thing that most motivated me to sit down and talk to myself today, tonight. Over the weekend, I was just uh, in a funk. And, and the reason that it, the reason that it, uh, I, it was, the reason it bothered me more than maybe it should have, should have, the reason it stood out to me is because I've been feeling good. I've been feeling good. I've been just, you know, I've been working and working and playing and just feeling good about life. And then on Saturday, I just didn't feel like doing anything. In particular, I went upstairs around 5.30 p.m. and proceeded to sleep for 14 hours. That could be a sign of depression, but I don't want to throw that word around. I don't really don't think I am near depression. I was just feeling a little funky. And as I said, it bothered me. I mean, everybody gets bothered when they don't feel well, but sometimes we get in this habit of just thinking that not feeling well is just, well, that's the way it is. That's life. Life is misery. Life is suffering. Life can be a bitch. Shit happens, right? All of that stuff. But that's just negative patterns, negative thinking, bad habits. It, it doesn't have to be that way. And I've convinced myself of that more often in recent days, weeks, months, years. And like I said earlier, um, Ellen Watts, I've been waking up and going to sleep uh, listening to various lectures by Ellen Watts uh, with the main goal just to keep perspective on things, to not get so wrapped up and worried about everything, to stop being focused on everything except the present moment, which, by the way, is the only moment we ever have. And this is not a new concept. But obviously. It's not new to me. It's not new to the world. I, it's, it's just... As I stop, it's just what? It's just when, did you hear that? Silence. We're close to it. There's a little noise here and there. But silence. There's not enough of it. Not enough of it in my brain. Not enough of it in the world. Although there is plenty of it, actually. We just don't tend to focus on it. We can have silence whenever we want it. We can turn shit off. We. Why am I saying we? Why am I using the royal we now? I'm, I'm wanting to 
just to be talking to myself, even though I do plan on uploading this as a podcast episode, I purposely did not start with music because I wanted it to just be a cold open, talking to myself, and then a cold close. I haven't totally reached my goal, though, because I do feel like I'm talking to somebody else at this time. But it's a weird thing, because even if I feel like I'm talking to myself, which self am I talking to? Am I trying to talk to myself right now inside of my head? I mean, am I really doing this in a meditative way to say everything is happening in the current moment and I'm talking to myself? That's one possibility. Another possibility would be I'm sending this message to a future self of mine. In which case, that's not the same self that's sitting here right now talking, making this sound. We are constantly changing. It's hard to put your hands around it. It's like trying to grasp a handful of water. Why am I here? Why am I here? Here right now talking into this microphone for one thing and here overall. Why am I here? We ask that from the moment we can communicate. Why am I here? I have a better question. Why not? <laughs> I don't know if that's a better question, but it's another question. The fact is I'm here and dot, dot, dot. Time is a weird thing. I was thinking about a house that I lived in with my children and my ex-wife. She wasn't my ex-wife at the time. And I have images. And I pull up those images, those memories. And it's like it just happened. It's the weird thing about life, about memories. There's this illusion that things, things that happened 20 years ago are right now, are happening right now. So many infinite moments have happened since then. It's really weird. I mean, who are we without our memories? What if I am just who I am right now? I mean, in one sense, that's all I ever have been. I've always just been me right now, in the eternal now. There's no future, there's no past. It's just now, over and over and over again, right? I don't have to ask you, right? Because it's true. It's the way it is. The universe is configured with all of the countless particles. 
at any given moment, and then boom, there's another moment, boom, another moment. Particles move, and in that sense, time is just an illusion, because all time really is is just our way of measuring the changing movement of particles. And I don't know how, how, you, how, I, can, how I can make that useful to myself, but, but that's a, one thing about philosophy. Sometimes it's like, well, the question is, why is it useful, is it, or is it useful at all? Who cares? How about art? How about music? Is it useful? Is there a purpose to it? Does there always have to be a purpose to something? Does there have to be a purpose to me talking right now? Does there have to be a purpose to the fact that I'm moving my mouth and thoughts are coming out of my face and into a microphone and going and being recorded? Does there have to be a purpose? Maybe it is what it is. Maybe. Maybe it is whatever I define it to be for me. I'm alone in this room. Talking. Thinking. What's it all about, Alfie? So getting back to the past for a moment, on Saturday, a couple of days ago, I was in a funk, I laid in my bed, went to sleep, 14 hours, had various dreams. One of them, I remember, was a nightmare. I don't have very many nightmares, but it was not a, no, not the most, not like I woke up in a sweat kind of nightmare, but it was not pleasant. I'd gone back to visit my old school and at some point a riot broke out so yeah it's not pleasant people were setting buildings on fire and I was just trying to find a place to hide in a corner so I was trying to get to the root of that why? Why was I in a funk? And why was I having a dream about about there being a riot? And I thought, oh gee, I know. Maybe it's because I've allowed myself to start paying attention to the news again. The news. Fucking joke. What a fucking joke. And I've known that for years, and I'm not... And it's not news for me to say that the news is a fucking joke, but it just... All it is is a bunch of crap that's supposed to make us feel like shit. It wears a suit and tie to make us think that it's important, that it's stuff that we have to know. And oh, we'll feel so informed and a part of the process, and we can be good citizens if we pay attention to what's going on, if we just watch the news. But all these irresponsible bastards just keep doing is proliferating a bunch of negative bullshit. Now listen to me. Listen to me talking right now. You see, you see how negative I am right now? I don't want to be like that. But that's called fighting fire with fire because that's just a bunch of negative bullshit. Well, then my choice was I don't want to fight fire with fire. I want to get away from the fire. I have a choice. I don't have to be sticking my hand in the fucking fire every day. Sticking my face in the fire, jumping into the fire. I don't have to be in the fire anymore. So I turned it off. Oh, it's only been a couple days and I've done this before and I'll do it again. It's the constant cycle of plugging in and unplugging. But I don't know. Do I really need to plug in again? Do I really need to? 300 million people in this country, 7 billion people on the planet. Does it really matter if I watch the news? Or in this case, not even watch it. What decade is this? What century? I don't really watch the news. I just... F flip through it on my phone.
And then I just get pissed off because of the usual, the usual shit. And I'm just feeling it right now. I'm feeling the venom churning back up inside of me. And I just don't want that. I want to be ignorant again. I want to be ignorant. We all ignore something. We have to. It's the way, you know, we get overloaded. Even just like right now. Even just right now. There's so much sensory information coming at me. Just sitting in a room that I have to ignore. Otherwise my brain would get overwhelmed. I can't possibly pay attention to every little detail of everything that's going on around me even just in my room, let alone in the world. And then, and now, see, now here's the part where I say I'm ignorant. I'm going to be ignorant, just like everybody has to be ignorant. We all have to be ignorant. We have to ignore something. And the things I'm going to ignore, and I want to turn my voice back to a positive one, the things I want to ignore are just the never-ending drumbeat of us versus them negative bullshit. Which is why when I turned off that constant negative chatter, what I turned on instead are documentaries about solutions, about things like pure things like mathematics or astronomy, inventions to make the world a better place. All the, all the things that that I know that human beings are capable of when we're not pissing in each other's faces. <laughs> How's that for keeping it positive? I just... And then I turned to philosophy, although my problem was I was turning to philosophy for a perspective and to try to get in the moment and remember that there's only the moment. But then I continued to still flip through various feeds on my phone, getting poisoned. So I gotta cut out the poison. There, it's actually simple pretty simple I, I still felt the need to convey it now because I was thinking well maybe I'm wrong maybe I was feeling funky for some other reason but I don't think so because here a couple of days have gone by and I'm feeling better already could be a coincidence you know it's not a scientific study maybe I was coming down with something I didn't really feel sick but you know, then again if I'm sleeping for 14 hours there's probably a good reason for it but I really do think it was psychological more than physical And so that's what I think. That's what it is, right? And again, I don't need your approval. <laughs> Even if you are me. So I think that's about that. I set out to make this uh, the kind of recording that I was doing when I first started doing this. And the reason I entitled this podcast, um, what is it called? Something about, yeah, I've got nothing to say, but it's okay. So even though I did have a kind of a thumbnail sketch of what I wanted to talk about, I didn't really, I didn't have any bullet points, and I, I put a piece of paper alongside of me with a pencil in case I started getting overloaded and had certain topics that I wanted to talk about and started st stacking them up, but I didn't end up writing anything down. And now as I see the timer is at 29 minutes and 29 seconds, I think I'll arbitrarily stop at a nice round number, like 30 minutes, give or take. But if time is an illusion, then why should I care? <laughs> 